As British territory grew, more Japanese clans put aside their internal politics to challenge the invaders. But it wasn't easy. The Yonago failed twice to recapture Hiroshima, even with a powerful army. And troops from further east landing in Kyushu did not take the British by surprise. The biggest counterattack so far came from the Hirado, trapping a British army in a hopelessly unsuitable fort and closing in, sword drawn. Keep firing! I want those pantomime bastards eaten mud post bloody haste! I don't care if you signed up for this or not, we got a hall full of coffin testers right here, and as long as you're half Bristol fashion, they're heading on you to keep those gut munchers out! Don't follow anyone into that mess. Don't care if they're your mate. You stand and you shoot. You ain't gonna beat the Japs in a sword fight. Don't know why so many of you don't get that. There's damn near nothing behind us, so no point thinking about getting out of here. You just set your pretty heads on to shooting. And if you get thraxed, then that's my problem. Don't you bother yourself worrying about it, alright? When bloody Kid Colonel Hook shows up, I want this castle speaking, dare I say, span. So give them a taste of the Empire. Make old Vicky proud and splash a little tap juice across the beaming face of God. Hello, it's time for more Honourable Gentlemen. We're in the middle of our battle against the Hirado, where Jos Arten's army is under pressure right now as the enemy charge inside our small fort and engage many of our units into melee, where we're not going to have a very good time. We've already lost half of our infantry and we've lost half the castle, but the rest of our men are now rallying near the capture point to just blast at the enemy as they charge towards us, and we are inflicting heavy damage. We're helped out by the fact that the enemy formations are broken up, both by the fact they have to climb up the walls so aren't coming over all at once, and by the fact we have a few troops like this hero right here, who are standing out in the open, risking being shot by our own men, and just generally disrupting the enemy by fighting them. In this case, that guy actually gets away with it after routing a couple of enemy units by holding them in front of our firing line. Elsewhere, we can't do the same thing. The enemy just surround and attack our units. Here it's the Highlanders, our Scotsmen, being gradually destroyed as they fight to the death against overwhelming enemy numbers. Nearby some King's Own are trying to keep these Yarikachi out of the castle. They'll probably succeed there since the enemy are already weakened. We're also starting to turn the tide of the battle overall using our cavalry. We've got lancers and dragoons wandering around outside the castle and they've cleared up everything that the enemy hasn't put into the castle already. They can also shoot at units that are routing as they escape to make sure they don't come back. And that's helping out quite a lot. You can see we're actually winning now on the balance bar. We've still got four or five units left, and the enemy probably with the same numbers but not the same morale. Their men are just routing and trying to leave the castle, so suddenly things are looking up. This unit's being very creative using this walkway to avoid routing through our men. I thought that was quite clever, although I do have some more troops standing just outside the castle for some reason who are able to attack those guys. And yes, now suddenly things are looking up. I order everyone to charge to just get these last few enemy units out of the castle. Everything starts routing. There are the heroes still going in the middle of the fight. They even survived it. And really things just turned around because of enemy morale being low. The fact that they had to fight all of our men to the death meant that while the fights might not have been in our favour, we killed loads of enemies as we went down, even if it's just one for one. So in the end, a costly victory, a Pyrrhic victory really. We took enormous losses, but the defence was successful and the enemy also took enormous losses. About two thirds of our men dead and many full units dead as well. So those losses are permanent in game logic. We can't just get them back. That means we're going to have to spend a lot of money and spend some time to get this army back into a usable state. 
But for now, we're safe because the Harado army is so damaged it can't attack us anymore. That doesn't mean the Sacho or something won't just attack while we're weak, so we still need to be careful. The Matsue appear to be staging an invasion of Owami. It's going to be up to Charles to deal with that. But first, he's actually just to the west, being attacked by the Tatori invaders. This battle actually looks quite easy. We've seen a battle like this in the previous episode where we won, but this one's even easier. The enemy force is smaller. So I'm not really going to focus on it. The only thing I wanted to experiment with was an alternate strategy. I'm not bothering with the stage of the battle where we try and shoot the enemy before they get to the castle. I'm just going to let them in and cluster all of my troops around the central part of the castle so we can put as much fire on the enemy as they climb over the wall as possible. Since after all, we did tend to lose when we attempted to hold the outer walls. So this strategy just skips that stage and means we have more firepower for the defense of the interior. And this seems to be effective. The enemy are taking huge losses as they come in and they're not being able to use their rifles. They're being forced to charge into melee and then they're getting shot when they're in those melees as well. And this strategy proved to actually be even more successful than I thought it would be. We're going to be winning this battle with virtually no losses whatsoever. Father. I've been receiving your letters. In fact, I had three at once just yesterday. I suppose you didn't catch my telegraph of four days prior confirming that I am alive. I would like to think that my death would be loud enough news that you wouldn't need to seek it out with such passion. You will likely hear that the invading army has been dealt with. I regret to inform you that it was on my own initiative that we met them in battle. Your orders to remain on standby seemed rather counter to our aims, so I took it upon myself to tidy things away. Your stomach probably reels at the thought of how many of your troops I lost in the process. I will begin, then, the process of chipping away at your disbelief over the notion that, through my research, I have developed a most splendid strategy of defense that handily keeps our men alive. I would detail it here, but I must be on the move again to fight the next battle the Matsue approach. They are part of the Matsudaira family, from which the enemy supreme commander, the Shogun he is called, descends. Fascinating history, if you have the time to indulge. With that army dispatched, we now need to move Charles up to Awami, ready to defend against the oncoming Matsue invasion. I need to get the cavalry out of the castle. We want to have mostly infantry inside and not have a full stack inside, so we get some free units spawning in the garrison or from the garrison if the enemy attack. As for his father, the outlook's difficult here. There are lots of small enemy armies and lots of enemy settlements to the east, so it's hard to say what the best direction to go will be, since we're Wherever we go, we'll then be exposing a flank to attack from somewhere else. Because of that, I thought we'll just stay on the defensive for now. We'll hang around the castle here and see what happens. We can try to lure some of the enemy armies towards us by having most of our forces hidden. And I can even set up an ambush that just about covers the road up to the castle. So we'll see if anyone wants to go for the castle now that it looks weak. And that may allow us to thin out the number of armies, of small army groups that are around the place to make strategy easier in that area. Now as for Western Kyushu, I'm currently spying down the coast here to see if the Sacho look like they might be about to attack because that's the real worry. And they do have various armies in the area but they're not particularly close so we have at least a turn to prepare and in this turn we're going to arrive with all these reinforcements under hook. So now the front line should be safe again although we are sacrificing the opportunity both to attack and to defend the eastern part of the island if it gets attacked. But we'll just hope that it doesn't for now. We do need to keep this area secure and the armies that we can see are closer to it. So this seems like a sensible thing to do. In the Sacho turn, their armies start moving up towards us. So perhaps an attack is on the way. But as I said, we do still have some time. The Matsue make the expected attack, but don't actually go for the assault. They just leave Charles under siege there. So that's interesting. Not exactly what we want. Wanted, actually. And then the Matsuyama send an army towards Aki. It seems they have taken the bait and now they've been ambushed by our hidden force. 
So they're mostly line infantry with a few melee units. No general, so that's good. They'll have low morale and extra low morale since it's an ambush battle. They apparently had time to set up those defenses there in their column. I think that's just a glitchy thing in this mod. And my strategy is just going to be to run up to them and start shooting. Nothing fancy, not attacking from two sides to avoid any friendly fire. We're just going to hope that we'll have the advantage in this quick line battle. First, though, the enemy's cav are attacking us but they are going to get shot by most of my men as they come in and virtually none of them actually make it to our lines and that unit is going to be pretty easily routed now. Elsewhere some more normal line battling is happening and that's where we're really taking losses because while our men do have the drop on the enemy, the enemy troops aren't necessarily any worse than us and they are just shooting back so it's going to be a somewhat even fight although the enemy's formation is abysmal so we'll have the advantage in that respect. They've also got more melee units charging forwards and they're pretty much the priority because they could easily break through our quite thin line and start causing some trouble. We don't manage to kill that many of them as they come in but now that the melee has started we can rely on point blank range shooting to hopefully defeat them before they defeat us and of course rely on our, on our morale advantage which is the key thing for an ambush. Here I wanted to stop the enemy shooting at my line by just plowing all of my lancers into these infantry units. We've seen before that's not necessarily a good idea, our men may struggle in the melee but again the enemy's low morale means we don't have to kill very many of them and it frees up more of my units to manoeuvre and generally surround the enemy. You can see we're doing that here, forming a big bowl to fire at the enemy units that are still firing back at us, so we can just get overwhelming firepower and try to kill these units as quickly as possible, focusing them down so they won't do too much damage to us. And that does seem to be working. We are decimating these squads. They're losing men all over the place and losing morale as well. Here, the men who were engaged with my lancers have now routed, so that actually works surprisingly well. They'll get run down and the other units route at about the same time as well. A decisive victory and a very quick one at that. Wasn't completely clean, we certainly took casualties, but the enemy took more and we will get replenishment this turn where we're standing, so it'll be a little bit less than it says it is. Overall, it seems the plan has worked. That's probably the most powerful army in the area, that we can see at least, taken out of the picture. Although you can see there, they've got another small force that moves in towards the castle. We'll go after that in a minute. Just wanted to take a look at the situation for Charles. Tons of line infantry, basically, just besieging him inside the castle. And while we could sally out, I want to stay on the inside and see if they attack us, because that would give us such an advantage. We do still have a couple of turns of supply, so we'll just see how it goes for now. John goes after those additional units that we saw moving near the castle at Aki, finds them and destroys them, although I was a bit frustrated here because I couldn't get all three of my different armies here into this battle, but whatever, it was still an easy win, so the front line is looking stable here. We almost walked right by. Quietest camp I've ever known. Camp's bloody empty. Empty? Is everything okay, Colonel? No. Didn't you hear about the fight? I heard you won, that's all. Don't tell me all those sealed tents. Yep. Lost most of the boys. Most? As in, more than half? Are you being serious? Yes, I'm being serious, Colonel. Those bastard jebs head us up against the walls. Even the new regiment from Blardy got it. Barely been here a week. That's... Uh, incredible. I should congratulate you for achieving what you did. Don't. Don't need it. I'll think up my excuses for the Major General and put it behind me. Yes, I would say that's for the best. In your experience? Well, I mean, I did see a fair few boys check out on my account. I think that keeping it out of mind is best for the spirit and all. Nice. I'll do that then. Owen, oh, thanks for showing up and all. Bit faster next time. In the Sacho turn, we see that they are indeed coming up to attack us in this area with one and a bit stacks. So, at least we've concentrated our forces there and we're ready to defend already. We've got the Harado appearing to regroup over to the west, so we also need to deal with them. That means we're going to have to split our army. Looking at the enemy force, it's just loads of line infantry with a few special units, including some long-ranged lighter infantry. I noticed that they actually don't know about Joss Arten army. His army is hidden right next to them right now. I had kept him outside of the castle thinking it might draw the enemy into an attack that they would 
fail at, so I'm just going to leave him like that to see if we can end up getting an ambush there. Hook is going to move on the Harado, they fall back into their castle, and I'll happily advance and now put them under siege. That, at the very least, contains them, so we don't have to worry about them for a bit, and we will just leave that siege going because we want them to attack us, a castle assault. Never a good idea for our army composition. As for these military police, I'm going to leave them out here because they're actually doing a pretty good job of distracting the Harado fleets. They constantly try to bombard them, and that means they're not attacking buildings that are on the coast which would actually cost money to repair so that's pretty handy. With John Alcock I'm just going to put him in ambush as well since we might as well try to repeat the success of the previous ambush on that road. There are more enemies on the way but overall the enemy look weak in that area so we may be able to attack them soon. Charles unfortunately still didn't get attacked by the force besieging him and he's about to run out of supplies. I'm still going to just leave that going because I want to gamble on them attacking us because of the advantage that would give us. The Sajo apparently see Joss there. They kind of moved towards him and then suddenly moved east. That's a pretty good move. They're going towards our undefended settlements now. Pretty annoying. Before we worry about that, it looks like we did get the attack that we wanted here. The Matsue finally attacked just as we ran out of supplies. So that was nice of them. Just a load of line infantry, only a couple of dedicated melee units, so that's exactly what we like to see. As the battle started, I was focused on my cav. I've got some dragoons and some lancers coming in as reinforcements in this village down here. I ordered them to move to the southern part of the map, but two of them went via a very roundabout route that actually took them right in front of the enemy's reinforcements. They stopped and started blasting at us, and I had to run away, noticing this just as it started. So we'll get away with it, but some avoidable casualties coming in there. They'll now go around the southern part of that hill to join the rest of the troops. Their mission is to attack the units that were just shooting at my guys in the southern part of the castle. But they actually turned around to face my cavalry. I didn't expect them to do anything as my cavalry advanced, but by actually shooting at me they will cause a bit of an issue. My Dragoons can stop and fire back, but the Lancers need to just charge. I could have not charged, of course, but I thought this would go well, and it didn't really. We lost about half of the unit making this charge, and that's not a very good melee they're getting stuck into either. The uh, game, by the way, started hitching quite a lot at this point. It will go away after a while. I think it's the pathfinding towards the edge of the map where there are lots of buildings and rocks is really screwing everything up. Anyway, my Dragoons just shot the adjacent unit up and they ran away, so we are going to be able to solve that situation with just our Cav. At the same time, the first enemy units are starting to enter the castle and we're going to do the same strategy we saw earlier where we don't really defend the very edge of the castle, we just let the enemy in a bit so we can get more guns on them. Those levies firing their silent rifles are hopefully doing some damage and these conscripts here in Neil fire are going to have very good lines of sight as the enemy advance, just going to be able to shoot everything. On the eastern part of the castle there was also a smaller assault going on, but really nothing came of it. Their first couple of waves just routed once they got inside, so nothing too exciting. And it's really a similar story in the western part of the castle. Because the enemy are just attacking with a couple of units at a time to start with, we're well able to just cut them down as they come in. They could wait for all their reinforcements and come in all at once, but fortunately for us, they didn't think of that little strategy. Slowly but surely though, they're going to make some progress and each wave gets a bit closer to our troops as it charges around there, so maybe if they throw enough men into the grinder they'll achieve something. Back on the east side I've brought all of my cavalry inside so the Dragoons can now provide some close range support, stopping enemy units from climbing further into the castle and just making sure we win over here. We did lose a full unit of line infantry in this area due to the enemy just shooting at them and me not noticing until it was too late, so that was a bit of a shame. But overall their attack is going to be failing. Here in the western part, now the enemy have finally made it in. They've got enough troops to push through and start some melees here, but can they keep them going? They're going to be fired at from our men 
behind those conscripts on the walls, and my levies are doing a little bit of a daring move here, moving forwards into the melee, because that will allow them to stand on the tower capture point. A bit annoying that the capture point for that tower is on the attacker's side, so it's hard to hold it. But things are going pretty well. You can see the enemy are still falling back, even after they've got loads of units inside, and our conscripts have held the line and cut down the opponents that came to face them. One thing the enemy did achieve, though, was that they captured the nearby gate, so that allows them to bring units in, still in formation, sort of, so they can actually come in and start shooting at us rather than being all spread out and just running about all over the place. That's going to do more damage to us, I think, but still, we have the ranged advantage, so in a ranged battle, for now, we're going to be able to cut the enemy down, and the first unit that comes in sees heavy casualties very quickly. And we're not even firing properly, you can see these levies aren't especially enthusiastic about actually firing at those troops, maybe because they're on the edge of the arc of fire, they don't want to. Not quite sure what's happening there, but it wasn't very good. On the flip side, the conscripts are doing amazing work, absolutely blasting the enemy to pieces. They've already picked up a couple of hundred kills, and it looks like they're going to get a couple of hundred more. The enemy are just being repulsed every time they get near these guys. You're tired of being a mere peasant in a world of jewel-encrusted lords. You're tired of knowing that the arbitrary justice of the careless elite is the best you can hope for when you are wrong. You're tired of your children and their children and their children all being bound as mere servants to those who live free. You are men of ambition. You wish to see the future of your nation bettered. And they are not. They are the men who blindly follow the orders of their cackling masters, realizing nothing of the weight they are on their families and country. Such men have cost Japan much for the last 200 years. Finally, this is your chance to rid yourselves of this disease. The world cheers as you slay these shadows of the past. The future brightens with every slave of the samurai who falls and the Empire remembers the heroic deeds its subjects have performed and gives them the glory they deserve. Now carry on. I'll be watching from close by, I assure you. After an attempt to drive the enemy away with a spear levy charge completely failed, I pulled the conscripts back so that this enemy blob would move closer to the wall and we could get more guns firing on it. Plus, while it's moving, it's not firing at us and they're taking very heavy casualties, not even really rushing into the attack, and as soon as they get to the wall, they start running away. We did just rout them all and really this is bringing the battle to a close. They still have units out here and they're just firing against a unit that's up on the wall in front of them and not doing very well. We're routing unit after unit with our return fire. Some of them have also spotted my recruits sitting in this alcove and they're drawing far away from the better units, so that's nice. And as you can see, these men here are just gunning the enemy down and this really does bring the battle to an end as everything starts to rout. And now we can bring out the cavalry to chase down routing units and inflict massive damage. We do need to chase them down because lots of these units are reinforcements. That guy was very slow on the uptake that he'd been killed, but he got it eventually. So Charles will join the Dragoons and Lancers, just charging about and killing everything we can see. Towards the end we saw an enemy general sneaking around the back of the castle. I got some conscripts and Dragoons to set up to uh, kill all his guards and finally try to kill him. He seemed surprisingly lucky, lots of the bullets missing. But after a long period of attempting it, we brought him down. So that's all the enemy officers taken out as well. A heroic victory. It went surprisingly well, the enemy taking huge casualties, nearly 5,000 enemies killed, and they never threatened the interior of the castle. We lost something over 500, but many of those were the spear levy units that just got annihilated in melee. So overall, in terms of real losses, I think the enemy lost something like 10 times what we did. We can see here, leading the table is a couple of units, some British line infantry with over 700 kills, and those conscripts picking up over 500, and surviving the whole battle in that very dangerous position as well. They did particularly well. A few survivors escape, but obviously they're not going to last long once our turn comes about. 
In the Matsuyama turn, the ambush we set up for them once again is successful. They fell for it twice, and this time it's just a load of ninjas and some levies. They're not going to be able to do anything, and we'll just auto-resolve them out of existence. Very good. So now they're going to be very low on troops, and we probably do want to counterattack as soon as possible. Now the issue is that I needed to know where this Sacho army had gone. We can see half a stack here that looks like it's going up towards Nakatsu, so we can assume the full stack we saw in the past is also on the way up there and is just hidden. That's pretty annoying. We need to get back over and defend, but there's also another Sacho army nearby that might attack us if we do that, so no real way to be completely safe, but I am going to start moving Joss back over to the eastern portion of the island. And you can also see his army is looking very elite. I've been picking up more and more of the higher level troops from the nearby officer school, so he's actually commanding the most powerful army we have in the theatre right now. John Alcock's going to advance, as previously mentioned. We're going to bypass the places to the north and south and just take the place on the main road. Nothing much inside, loads of levies, we'll just auto-resolve that. And this auto-resolve actually gives us a heroic victory, which is surprisingly uncommon, and considering we had a giant advantage, I think it's being very generous there. Anyway, so we are now surrounded here by enemy territory and potentially enemy armies, but at this stage I think it's worth being surrounded and just saying, well, come and try to attack me if you can, I think they will fail. Nearby we've got Charles out to destroy those survivors from the Matsue, so now the road is clear, and presumably the Matsue don't have much left in their army, so now it's worth thinking about having Charles go on the offensive, even though he was tasked with just defending this area. The terrain means this is basically one gigantic choke point. We can advance and take many castles up the road and still have Iwami be defended in that way. Our spy reveals there's nothing much up the road for us to fear, so we'll start moving, and in the future we should be able to take a castle by the looks of things, not too much in the way of defences on the horizon. Now in that all-important Sacho turn, they move back to the west, so we're going to have to move back as well. Luckily they couldn't attack a settlement right now. And then the Harado that Hook had under siege sally out, so this is what we wanted to see. This will allow us to hopefully defeat them and get into the castle before the Sacho arrive to make ourselves safe. Looks like a pretty standard set-piece battle, plenty of melee units to worry about, but we'll just have to see what we can do. So we'll kick things off next time with that fight. That is it then, thank you very much for watching, and special thanks to the officially Devon patrons for making all this happen. While we'll continue to have trouble in Kyushu, in Honshu we are ready to advance and make some real progress in the next episode of Honourable Gentlemen.